Lord Jesus be with you in your heart and on your lips that you may faithfully proclaim his holy gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or at the crow, cr crack crow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> Dear friends, when uh, George Bush Sr. was president of the United States, he, he had sort of like a hobby of visiting nursing homes unannounced. He would simply show up with his security detail. And once he came upon a wizened old man hobbling down the corridor of a nursing home, and the president went up to him, and he took his hands in his own, and he looked in the man's eyes, and he said, Sir, do you know who I am? And the man replied, No, but if you ask one of the nurses, she will help you to remember. The church has its own calendar, and in the church's calendar, the new year begins today on this first Sunday of Advent. And in order to understand Advent, you, of course, need to understand Christmas. And in order to understand Christmas, you need to go back to the very early days of the church, the first centuries, when most of the world was pagan, that is not Jewish, and not Christian, but followed the Roman gods or the Greek gods. The pagans saw the world as a great struggle between the powers of darkness and the powers of light. And they noticed that at some times of the year, darkness seemed to be getting the upper hand. They were watching, as it were, two, two cosmic wrestlers. And every once in a while, the wrestler called darkness would pin down the rest are called light. They notice this because at this time of the year the days were getting shorter and shorter and that meant that light was getting weaker and weaker and perhaps was going to be overwhelmed by darkness. And then right around December 21st they saw that the tables would get turned and light began to get stronger and gradually began to push darkness off. 
And that's because at around December 21st, 22nd, the days begin to get longer and the darkness becomes less dominant. So the pagans always would hold celebrations around the end of December to celebrate the fact that darkness would not win the cosmic wrestling match, as it were, that light would ultimately prevail over darkness. And then when the Christians came along, they said, well, that's not such a bad idea, celebrating the triumph of light over darkness. Of course, the real darkness is the darkness of sin, which leads to death, and the real light is Jesus Christ, who gives us life. And since no one really knew what day of the year Jesus was actually born on, they decided to celebrate his birthday right in the middle of the celebrations of light. They call that day Christ Mass, or as we say now, Christmas. And they made Advent the time of considering the triumph of darkness over light. Advent is the time to think about darkness and light and prepare to celebrate the victory of light over darkness. And so on this first day of Advent, the first of 22 days this year, I want to pose a question to you. Where is the darkness that needs to be overcome by light? And I suggest you look in two places. First place, in your own life. You may be aware when you look at yourself that you need to become more understanding, more kind, more chaste, more forgiving, or less materialistic, less addicted, less cynical. What dark things in your life would you like to see reversed? And secondly, um, look around you your family, your friends, the people who make up the fabric of your, of your daily life, and recall something that I think we forget way too often, that we have well, probably more power than we realize to bring light into the darkness of other people's lives. So we do it very simply by a courteous note, uh, by an apology, by words of forgiveness and understanding, or by emulating George Bush and visiting a nursing home. You get the idea. Many young people at this time are busy making a list. I want to suggest that you make a list too, not a child's list of what you hope Santa Claus will bring you, but an adult list, list of what you hope to do to roll back darkness, first in your own life, then in the lives of the people who form the texture of your existence. We live in darkness. Others live in darkness. We can roll it back. We can help the sun to shine. We can make the day brighter. Let your light shine before others, Jesus says. Advent is a good time for this to happen. A new year, a new beginning, a time when darkness begins to ebb and the time when the sun 